AITA for telling my parents and not include my stepdaughter in their will. Original post, October 11, 2024. I, 35F, have two kids, 17 MF win, and one stepdaughter, 18, who I met when she was 11. The other day, I was at my parents' house going over some estate planning as I am the executive. While reviewing, I saw my folks had split their assets to be half for my two siblings and I and the other half for their grandkids, all to be distributed even. My stepdaughter was included. When I asked them about this, they said they wanted to be fair. Their estate isn't super large, but the sum would be substantial. Think new car. I told my parents that while generous of them, I didn't think it would be necessary and would be better to split between their five grandkids. When we got home, my husband said he overheard what I said and that I was being an offer alienating his daughter. I told him my reasoning was because she is the only child slash grandchild slash niece on both her parents' sides and that she would be set. Her grandparents own multiple properties. Her uncles are fairly well off and live in a hall area. And well, she's the only kid and it's not looking like, at least in his side, that she'll have any cousins. Plus, their collective net worth is substantially more than my side. I also asked him if his parents included my kids in their estate, but he refused to answer. Still, he said I was being an awe and accused me of not caring about her future. I think I was doing the right thing by looking out for my kids and their cousin. Ida? Edit. I was told to include this in the post. One I didn't argue with or pressure my parent to make a change. I simply mentioned that I don't feel it was necessary for her to receive a monetary amount. Two, my mom plans on giving her a set of family heirloom jewelry that is her birthstone. I think this is quite thoughtful. I'm not a big jewelry person and she has other set for the other girls in the family so I feel this is okay. Three, my parents have seen her about three five x a year since I met her. Four, my nephews and my kids do not have active relationships with their biological father's side. My niece is a new mom and works at a restaurant. I feel that financial inheritance would be more impactful for them even as such a small amount. 5. I know my SD is set to inherit at least two houses in a major city with call. I found this out a while back after my husband asked me to help him organize his office. I had to read through papers to know how to file them according. The paper was a certified copy and was drafted soon after we married. My kids were not included. I am not sure if it has been updated. I did not ask him about it at the time because I did not have an issue with. 6. There is distance in the relationship but I don't feel it's my fault. I can explain that. When I met her mom for the first time, she made it very clear that I wasn't her mom. I didn't see this as an issue because I did not want to overstep and as a mom myself, I could see where she was coming from and respected her request. But as time progressed, our opportunity to spend time together became less frequent. At first my husband at every other weekend visitation, it became less frequent as she became a teenager because she wanted to spend the night with friends, hang out, etc. which I see as normal teenager behavior. The other piece is that we were never invited to be included in major celebrations for her. We usually celebrated birthdays with her a week after because we weren't invited. My husband was just not a. She's also never spent Thanksgiving or Christmas with us because her mom wanted those days. Again, which I saw as fine because that's her only child. My husband would spend holidays with her at her mom's house which I encouraged because I knew the importance of father slash daughter connection. We also were not invited to her HS graduation. I think she's a beautiful and brilliant young woman and care for her tremendous but it's challenging to develop deep meaningful relationships with people you have little contact. 7 for people putting me in the category of the evil stepmother saying that I see her as other. Don't think that I haven't been trying since the beginning. I include her in every way I can in the times that she is with us by doing things like teaching her my family recipe, taking her shopping for clothes so that she doesn't have to bring things back and forth, and attending every school athletic event that I could. I have tried to include her in family vacation planning, but was told by her mother that unless the vacation occurred on a weekend we're scheduled to have with her then she would not allow us to have the time. This limited our options to local weekend trip but even then, her mom comes up with some reason she can't join, including surprise trip to another state. I even suggested a family cruise in lieu of a honeymoon to celebrate our new family but was blocked by her mom. My husband is allowed to take her on extended vacations as long as it's just the two of I have tried to be flexible in accommodations around holidays by postponing things like Christmas morning so that she can be included. This created frustration in my kids because they felt like they shouldn't have to put their lives aside to accommodate for her. One year when the holiday occurred on one of our planned weekends, I came up with a suggestion of celebrating Christmas on Christmas so we could do the full family thing. My kids weren't thrilled, but they understood. In the end we didn't end up spending any time with her as her mom told us that she planned on having a dinner party on Christmas Eve and needed my stepdaughter to help her prepare. When the time came for college application. I was ecstatic to be asked by my stepdaughter to help her with the application, but soon after was told that her mom hired a professional to help her get into her top choice schools and I was no longer needed. I have tried to have a bond with her with the little time that I have. I have consistently brought up to my husband that I feel like we needed more time with her to help build our relationship at the very least by him maintaining his every other weekend schedule. He has told me that ultimately her mom is her mom and she determines her schedule and how she spends her time. He has also expressed that he fears that if he undermines her mom, then he might lose the time and relationship that he does have with her and I do not want to be the reason for any sort of break in their relation. His time slash relationship with her hasn't changed. So maybe he doesn't see the need for me slash my kids to be involved. But if he doesn't advocate for it, then what am I supposed to do?
too? Some of Oop's comments. Comment. LMFAO. I can imagine his face when you asked if his parents included your children in their will. Oop. He just got pissed and said that wasn't the point. Commenter. Downvoted. Yeah kinda Uta. Having your family treat her different. And then her growing up knowing she's getting treated differently will strain relationship between stepdaughter and step siblings cause perhaps cause resent. Instead of your kids and their cousins having one more person of support in their life. They're missing out on that and VV. A new car doesn't make up for family life long support. Oop. She's not very close to her step cousins basically because of a lack of quality time caused by my nieces and nephews living out of state combined with infrequent visitation schedule. My kids and her get along decently well, but I wouldn't call it close again because of lack of quality time. They all went to the same HS and didn't interact socially because they had different friends groups which I think is normal for teenage. Maybe there is potential for closer relationships as they get older, but I don't necessarily foresee that as she has plans to move closer to her grandparents when she finishes college, which I encouraged her to pursue as having an opportunity to live in a major city as a young adult is exciting. It's challenging to develop close bonds with people who aren't really around. To people accusing Oop of snooping in her husband's office, I was helping him organize his office because he had. I had to look at each paper to determine how to file. It. Comment, I understand having uncomfortable feelings, but hopefully when he cools down he'll see that he's being unfair. Is he normally reasonable? People can really dig their heels in when confronted an emotion. If not, he's 100,000% the asshole. NTA, Oop, he's fairly reasonable but we don't often discuss finances as we have separate accounts and he pays most of the bill. The house we live in is owned by his dad so bills don't include more. I cover my personal expenses. The only time financial things come up for us is tax season. Their financial arrangement. This is the marriage arrangement that made sense for us at the time. My husband also very much desires to be in a provider role as he saw that example in his dad. I preferred that we purchase our own house together to have something that is ours but he said that he'd rather stay where we currently are because it's large enough for all the kids to have their own space as well as being in a better school district. He and I both discussed moving to our own smaller house once the kids were settled as young adult. I am benefiting in a way, but isn't that married? I make a reasonable salary a little less than the median household income for our city. He makes about 3x as much as I do in a good year as his work is commission based. My husband's own reasoning is that he is the provider. He wanted me to be a housewife, like his mom, but I enjoy my career. Comment, downvoted, Uda, but I think you are forgetting what you and your husband will inherit and what you and your husband will be able to pass down to all three children. As for assumptions on what you might inherit, nothing is guaranteed until the will is read and titled, deeds, and accounts are transferred. A lot can happen between now and then. It's not your place to interfere with what your parents wanted to do with their estate. Is it worth it to cause hurt and division? Her share divided up cannot be too life-changing if you said to think new car amount. Let's say a modest car around $30,000 since you didn't give fig. That's roughly $6,000 extra for everyone else. No, I'm sorry. I would not risk alienating my child over that. Oop. I wouldn't say I'd inherit anything. Yes, I would benefit, but they have a family trust. When we were dating, my husband told me his brother's ex-wife tried to sue for alimony but couldn't because of however the trust was set up. Unless he passes away and leaves me something individually I get. The way my husband has his estate set is that I'm beneficiary to his retirement slash life insurance and bank account but not the trust. Comment, write a will where you leave a substantial part of your property to your kids off and leave that will with a lawyer or trusted blood relative so it doesn't get lost. I'm sorry, but judging by your husband's behavior so far he's going to put his kid first and not even consider your oop. As it stands my mom is set to inherit everything I own in case I pass before. She knows to use it to help my kid through college first. However long they decide to go, allocate any differences between and then distribute funds among the rest of the family. Personal items are already listed out for family to receive for sentimental value. My plan is to reevaluate upon her death. This was set up before I got married. My husband is beneficiary on my retirement fund. Driving a wedge between Oop and her husband. Sometimes I feel like there's already a wedge. He's never spent a Christmas with us because he's with her. I've asked if we could have one and he says no because of her mom. But I also don't want to be the one to force him to decide because it's his child at the end of the day. Oop is voted NTA update. Same post. October 12, 2024. Next day major update. I haven't had the opportunity to have a discussion with my husband about all of this. As I was waiting to speak with my therapist to get advice on the best way to approach the conversation. However, I did receive a phone call this morning from my father-in-law who I see as an absolute angel of a man. Apparently, my husband told his mom about our argument and my mother-in-law went off and this is how my father-in-law found out about it. Phil asked me what my side of the story was and I very emotionally told him everything as I listed in the op. I told him it was not my intention to alienate SD in any way and that this whole thing has created a nightmare. After deep breath and slight pause, my Phil said that I did the right thing. A few years ago, my Phil suffered a series of strokes. He said that this prompted him to want to reevaluate the estate to make sure that everything was in order. He is quite old, close to 90, and has a lot of underlying health issues. He and my mill share all of their assets and she is also his POA in case anything happened. And because they have a family trust, he wanted to include her and his sons in the discussion. He told me that he brought up that he wanted to include my children in the family trust. He told me he proposed to allow for 10% of the trust's liquid assets to be split between my two kids to help get a start on life. He then said that my mill pushed back very hard saying that because my children were not biologically related to their family and they should not be considered. When he asked my husband his thoughts on Phil said my husband's response was that it was best to keep it in the family but that he would consider including us in his portion upon his passing if he and I were still together. Phil said this was a surprise because at that point we were still basically newlyweds and was surprised a new husband would even think that way. My
My Mills response to that was unhappy saying again we weren't blood and that this was a family because of the stress caused by the situation and because of the recent strokes Phil did not want to press things for Phil said afterward he pulled my husband aside to find out more about what he had meant and to be assured that my kids would be included and was basically told by my husband that he would do what was best for his family and the conversation was dropped now Phil said that he didn't push further at this point because he was getting tired from the conversation but in light of what's happening and how my mill and husband are responding behind closed door he felt it was necessary to let me know he said that SD is set to be more more than okay when it comes time, and that my husband is asked to tap into funds to pay for her college so she would not need to take out any loan, which he agreed to. He said he asked my husband if he would do the same for my kids and that my husband's response was that he would ask when the time came as my kids did not yet know what was going to happen regarding college admission. Phil asked me if my husband and I had this conversation. I told him that my husband and I discussions about my kids' school was that they would need to take out loan, finish college, and then we would help pay off half of the loans together once they graduate. My husband has never suggested that anything for my kids' college would be paid for through his family truck. My Phil was very apologetic, saying he should have pushed further as he loves us greatly and feels like he did not do enough. I told him it was not his fault and that he should not feel responsible for any of it and that I did not want him to feel obligated to make any changes or bring it up with Mill slash husband because I knew it would create additional stress for him and I wanted him to take care of his pee. He said though his desire would be to do so, that since his wife and he have a joint estate and that she is POA, that he felt like it would be more trouble than it were. He is blind and has a lot of mobility issues so anything he does he is dependent on. He also said that based on what he's heard on his side, he felt if he did update his will, then they would likely contest it which would create a financial burden on my end and he didn't want to create a negative situation. I told him again that it was okay and that we would be okay in life and that he was not responsible for anything that happened. I told him that my intention wasn't to be added to the trust. Just to make a point to my husband to which he said he understood and agreed. He apologized again. We told each other how much we loved one another and he ended the call saying he considered me a person of integrity which is a rare gem. Now that I have this information, I feel like this whole situation brought to light a lot of things I hadn't considered regarding my marriage. Also, writing out everything regarding how my husband navigated his relationship with his daughter slash ex-wife really put things into perspective that makes me feel like we were never a priority for. I'm not sure where to go from here. I plan to bring this all up with my therapist and talk it out to figure out what I should do, but I no longer feel like the offer advocating for my biological family because my husband and his side have been advocating for theirs. Phil excluded. TLDR told my parents I thought it wasn't necessary to include SD in their will because she's set to inherit a lot from my husband's family. Husband got pissed and said I was alienating his daughter. Later got a call from my Phil saying I wasn't the op.